Did you know that there is an easy and cheap, oftentimes free with insurance test that you can do to see if there's an increased risk to have a child with one of many severe life-shortening genetic diseases. And you can even do it from the comfort of your own home. I'm Katie Lee, a certified multi-state licensed genetic counselor. And today I'm going to be telling you about carrier screening. With just one little tube of blood, or even one cheek swab that you complete from the comfort of your own home, a genetic testing laboratory could test you, your partner, your egg source, or your sperm source to find out if they are a carrier for hundreds of different genetic diseases. Ideally, you and your reproductive partner should undergo carrier screening before trying to conceive. The reason being, if you are identified to be at a significantly increased risk to have a child with a significant genetic disorder, this gives you the most reproductive options, including time to research and learn about that genetic disorder, thinking about doing IVF, creating embryos and testing the embryos to find an embryo that's not affected with the genetic condition, thinking about testing prenatally, thinking about using a different egg source or sperm source to reduce your risk, or thinking about building your family in a different way. And those are just some of the options. So if you're thinking, oh, I'll just wait until I'm pregnant and then I'll do that testing, or if your OB hasn't offered it to you yet, but you are thinking about conceiving, take a pause because for the vast majority of people, the best time to do carrier screening is before you conceive because this gives you the longest amount of time to understand your results and to pivot if you want to. It gives you the most control and the most reproductive options to build your family using all of the information that's available to you. If you are already pregnant and you're here to learn more about carrier screening, that's okay too. That's when a lot of OBs first bring up the idea of carrier screening with their patient and there are still plenty of options. You might be thinking, is carrier screening really for me? Maybe you know that there are no genetic diseases in any of your family members, including cousins and even more distant relatives. Or maybe you've heard that if you and your partner are different ethnicities or backgrounds, there is a reduced risk for genetic diseases. Carrier screening is actually something that should be discussed and offered to every single patient who wants to become pregnant, regardless of their ethnic background, their family history, or any other risk factors. Most people are surprised to learn that even when their family history is free from any genetic diseases whatsoever, it is very likely they will come back a carrier of at least one thing. Let me explain exactly how that works. Let's begin by throwing you back to biology 101 and what makes a disease or a gene recessive. So if you take a look here and you remember from biology that we have two copies of each of our genes and the genes are represented by these little bands. Now, technically there's hundreds or thousands of genes on each of our chromosomes, but we're just looking at this one here. You can have mutations or variants, genetic variants in each of your genes. The technology that's used for carrier screening is essentially reading through hundreds of genes looking for misspellings or errors. So we wanna see if the genes are normal or wild type, if there's no mutations in them, or if there is indeed a mutation. So looking at this individual where both of the genes are highlighted in red, we'll say this individual is unaffected in a non-carrier. Both of their genes are normal with no genetic variants. This individual, on the other hand, you can see that both of their copies of the gene are highlighted in green. We'll say that the green color means that they have a mutation in these copies of the gene. So this individual has no functioning copy of this gene. Both are knocked out, causing the product of the gene, the protein, to be atypical or maybe not be produced at all. So we would say this individual is affected with the recessive condition of interest because they've got no functioning copy of the gene. Finally, this third chromosome is what carrier screening is designed to detect. You can see this individual is a carrier of this disease or gene because they have one functional copy of the gene highlighted in pink and a second copy of the gene that is mutated or has a genetic variant. So for most cases, carriers, they won't have any symptoms of the genetic disease whatsoever. However, they could pass on their broken copy of the gene to their child, and if their child also gets another broken copy of the gene from the other gamete source or the partner, then that child is at risk for that specific genetic disease. Do you remember the Punnett squares from biology? Punnett squares can help us determine the risk for a genetic disease depending on parents or gamete sources um, status. We will say that this box these two boxes represent the egg source, and these two boxes represent the sperm source's um, genes for a recessive condition. In this Punnett square, each parent has a normal copy of the gene and a mutated copy of the recessive gene. 
So both of these parents or gamete sources are carriers of whatever genetic condition we're talking about. If both parents or both gamete sources are carriers of the same recessive disease, there is a 25% chance that each of their children are going to inherit their mutated copies of the gene and be affected with the condition. 50% of children are going to be carriers, just like the parents, and 25% are going to be non-carriers, not affected with the genetic condition. Let's take a quick look at this pedigree chart. A pedigree is a chart that genetic counselors can use to document how conditions travel in a family and who in the family is affected. So in this case, we're looking at a recessive disease called cystic fibrosis. This is one of the genetic diseases that most people have heard of. I want to use this pedigree to demonstrate one of the most common questions I get and a very common misconception. People will tell me all of the time, well, I have no family history of any of these diseases. Why would you want to test for them? The truth is the vast majority of people who are affected with recessive conditions, like Charlotte and Matthew here in this table, they have no family history of other affected individuals. And the way that it works is that the carrier statuses, you can see they're marked by a dot inside of the circle or square. These carrier statuses are passed down generation to generation. And an affected child does not appear until two different carriers happen to get together. And because most of us aren't carriers of the same conditions, this doesn't happen very often. But when it does happen, there's almost no other family history of the disease. So the only way to find out whether you're a carrier is by doing genetic testing called carrier screening. Now, there are certain populations where the risk of being a carrier for a certain disease or a group of diseases is increased. For example, in individuals of Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry, French Canadian, non-Jewish ancestry, and Cajun background, there is an increased risk to be a carrier of a life-limiting disease called Tay-Sachs disease. In individuals who are African, Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, Southeast Asian, West Indian, there's an increased risk to be a carrier of a hemoglobinopathy or blood disorder like sickle cell disease or beta thalassemia. And in individuals like me who are mixed European, mixed Euro Northern European, there is a significant chance that you could be a carrier of one of many diseases. For example, cystic fibrosis. One in 25 Caucasians who identify as mixed European ancestry are found to be carriers of that condition. So regardless of your ethnicity, whether you know your countries of origin well or not, it is worthwhile to consider carrier screening because we all have a risk of being a carrier of one of many diseases. Other things to consider are if you have a close relative, like a cousin with cystic fibrosis or spinal muscular atrophy, your risk to be a carrier is increased. So it would be worthwhile to consider the testing. Another indication would be if you're planning to conceive with a blood relative, like a first cousin, a second cousin, or third cousin, because of that shared common ancestor, there's an increased risk that the two of you would both be carriers of the same genetic condition. To summarize, the vast majority of us are carriers for a genetic condition. Carrier screening can help us identify what conditions we are carriers for. And then using both an egg source and a sperm source as carrier screening results together, you can best understand what your risks are to have a child with any of those different genetic diseases included on the screen. And you can use that information to help you make informed reproductive decisions. Deciding whether or not to undergo carrier screening is a personal choice, and there's not a right or a wrong answer. I'm not saying everyone needs to do it, but I think everyone should be aware of this option before they start trying to build their family. Based on my experience of talking to thousands of patients over my career as a genetic counselor, I will tell you that the vast majority of people, they do decide to pursue carrier screening because it is usually cheap or free these days, and it's an easy way to better understand what the risks are for genetic diseases. And most people do want that information in advance so that they can make medical or reproductive decisions based on that information. If you found this video informative, please like and subscribe. I've got tons of content coming out on carrier screening. So stay tuned or check out my carrier screening playlist to learn a bunch more about it. Bye guys.